Hello everyone. The title of my talk today is CWL, Strength is in the Possibilities. And today I'd like to cover a range of topics that present our platform view of CWL and some of the things that we've done um, to empower CWL use and maybe some opportunities that we can pursue as a community to advance CWL use. Um, I thought I would start a little bit in the beginning on how we developed our view of CWL. And it started with the NCI's request for information on developing a cloud initiative. And the motivation was, how do we deal with the increased rate by which data is generated? And part of that initial request, the outcome, was development of the Cancer Research Data Commons, for which the Cancer Genomics Cloud is just a small part of that. Um, and I'm going to talk a lot about how we developed the CGC to empower use of CWL. Um, an important aspect of the CGC is that we have a range of users, both technical and non-technical. Um, but at the core of the CGC is the ability to run workflows all written in CWL. We have over 800 workflows and we're proud to be original founders of the CWL community. Um, a key part of CWL is how do you develop workflows? And I want to just tell you a little bit about how we think about workflow development. Um, we initially thought that our workflow editor would change the world and that everyone would embrace it. And yes, uh, the editor was really well received. And if you look at the uh, workflow showed on the lower left, um, really great tool for developing CWL. Um, we also found that CWL development for programmers or highly technical individuals needs to be very different. So we helped to develop an ecosystem of tools, more tools than I can talk about in this short presentation, but I just wanted to highlight a few of them. Uh, one of the first tools was Seven Bridges CWL, which allowed the development of CWL workflows um, using Python. Um, also, our Ravix editor, which was an open source version of the visual editor I shown earlier, was very impactful back in 2015, 2015, or kind of the early days of CWL. Um, more recently, one of my team members helped to develop or actually authored Ravix Benton. And if you look at the right, this gives a more I, traditional IDE view approach to developing workflows where the CWL could be edited directly. Um, so the development tools are really important and what we're seeing is that they're also developed in production grade quality is what we're seeing a need for. In addition, one of the other areas we spend a lot of time is thinking about optimizing workflows. And these real world complications that occur can be kind of almost eliminated if we think about how we optimize the workflows for time and costs, for reproducibility, and for scalability. Um, and just for a really quick example, this is just a really standard alignment QC workflow. Our bioinformaticists looked very closely at it and then redesigned the workflow to run more efficiently, um, clearly skipping some steps. But if you do that, you can substantially reduce the um, amount of time it takes to run a workflow and potentially more important, reduce the cost to, to run a workflow. And we believe this is really important for advancing science um, because it helps to advance reproducibility. It shows a commitment to developing patient outcomes, so less time analyzing, more time thinking. And I can't understate how important cost is. Really spending limited resources where they're going to make the most difference is really important. And so many of our workflows, actually all our workflows when we release them, are optimized, but how do we get the community to do, take that same investment into optimized workflows? And how do we train people to optimize workflows? Um, you know, we talked 
a lot about CWL being important in and of itself. And I want to talk a little bit about another potential for um, CWL, which would be to drive tool design. Um, there are many applications in bioinformatics where we need a new tool. Um, this is an example of a tool my team developed to generate biocompute objects, which is basically a standard for communicating um, NGS analysis uh, with applications for FDA regulatory review. For this talk, the important part is it's driven, or at least the really cool features, are driven completely and automatically from taking information from the uh, CWL JSON object. And so what is so exciting about this is that CWL could facilitate other uses. Um, here's an example that I think a lot about what if we build tools to help manage workflow repositories? We now have 802, as of yesterday, apps or uh, CWL workflows on our public apps gallery. What if we wanted to identify all the tools with a specific or a specific, all the workflows with the specific tools and then upgrade those tools? I, I believe that could be done automatically at a huge time savings. Um, it's very similar for the consortia use case. Can we summarize all the contents of a set of maybe 12 or 15 workflows so that we can pair the workflows to another consortia? Yes, we have great bioinformaticists who can do that from memory, um, but I believe we can develop better tools. and. Uh, I would love to see more tooling that use CWL as a core base. Now, workflow translation is actually a really strong interest of mine. Um, you know, I listed just a few of the types of translations we might want to think about. Um, the really important concept here is I don't believe there's going to be a single workflow language winner in the community. I think that's one of the ways we thought about back in 2015, 2016. Um, really, the, the use cases we're seeing is use teams using multiple workflow languages and then consortia using different workflow languages across different sites and analysis needing to be done across many sites. And so I believe we need to develop some robust strategies for dealing with this. Um, you know, my computer science background says that there's a compiler in there, um, but more important than the implementation is that we have these robust solutions that the community can use. And this is the important part, the second part, which is we have to socialize those solutions and make them available. And I believe there's a place for the open source community and for industry to help make that happen. Um, clearly, the, the discussions we're seeing are involving CWL, Widow, and NetFlow in the same conversation uh, about a specific project. So maybe those are the ones we think about first. CWL training. And so we have a great bioinformatics team who can build unbelievable CAWL workflows. However, to have impact in the community, we need distributed development. We need the wide range of researchers to be able to port their tools uh, to platforms like ours. Um, some of our recent efforts have been in developing webinars. So this is an example of an introductory webinar where we use, we actually build off of uh, a blog post. It's a good way to get started. Here's a second webinar where we talk about how we optimize workflows. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, I've seen very little public information on how we optimize workflows. Um, given how the imp how much impact there could be, I'd love to see more uh, advanced uh, development training materials. Um, so we have a whole range of thing training themes. I'm just listing a bunch of them. But the key issue here is that our one-on-one -on -one training model is very effective and costly. So we'll be exploring other ways for which to do training. And we've already started expanding office hours and scheduled support. So what are the recommendations? Um, I think they should be in categories. So 
We want to nurture the collaborative international community, which is CWL, um, and maybe bridge links to the other workflow languages. Um, from a standards perspective, we'd love to see a regular update schedule. And clearly, this is limited by the volunteer nature of the CWL community. So, you know, how we invest so that the regular updates can happen, I believe, will be really important for the community. Um, industry perspective is also very important. Um, and it wasn't clear to me in my discussions in the last few weeks and months, but it definitely seems less than in the initial phases of CWL. Um, so maybe we can think about the technical and non-technical collaborations with industry um, that can help uh, sustainability and evolution of the standard. Um, from an infrastructure perspective, I love the idea of an building on workflow manager perspectives. Um, you know, we're now dealing with hundreds of workflows at a time, 10 and 15. What are the tools that are gonna help support that? Um, I gave a brief example about how CWL could enhance um, tool and workflow usability. We'd love to see more tools developed in that area. Um, and probably most important for this community is how do we sustainably fund the ecosystem and nurture the ecosystem so that it can have the great impact that is possible? So to just conclude, we have a deeply committed uh, CWL community. Um, we'd love to see um, the community continue to drive the standards. And we have an opportunity here to develop new classes of tools, to develop robust tools that help empower the use of CWL. Um, and lastly, I believe we should celebrate. We're approaching the 10th anniversary of CWL, and there's much to be celebrated and much to be done. Um, and as with all talks, um, I pulled from many groups and many conversations and many, many presentations throughout Velsera formerly Severn Bridges. So I just like to acknowledge um, that a lot of these ideas were generated in many conversations. So thank you.